Hi there. I couldn't tell you how excited I am about the book list for next year's Battle of the Books. You are going to love these books. I wanted to share a couple of them with you and tell you a little bit of what they're about so you can start picking out the ones you want to start with and specialize on for next year's Battle of the Books. Ban this book by Alan Gratz. It all started the day Amy, Annie, <laughs> Amy Ann Ollinger tried to check out her favorite book in the whole world from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankenweiler from the school library. That's when Mrs. Jones, the librarian, told her the bad news. Her favorite book was banned. All because her classmate's mom thought the book wasn't appropriate for kids to read. It was gone. Amy decides to fight back. Soon she and her friends find themselves on the front line of an unexpected battle over book banning, censorship, and who has the right to decide what you can read. All right, the next book. A snicker of magic. Sometimes friendship can be the most powerful magic of all. Some people collect baseball cards or hedgehogs or belly button lint. Not Felicity Juniper Pickle. She collects words. Word people are words people are thinking about. Words they want. Some have wings. Some have zebra stripes. Yet, although Felicity has been all over the country, there's one word she's never seen. Home. Felicity is tired of wandering from place to place. Making friends when you're the new girl can be harder than fractions. But when the family's dusty green van rolls into Midnight Gulch, Felicity feels her luck might be about to change. For the first time in her 11 years, she's found a place where she can grow some good memories and maybe even make a friend. That's because Midnight Gulch used to be magical until a curse drove the magic away. At least that's what most people think. Felicity can tell there's still a snicker of magic in Midnight Gulch. It hasn't disappeared. It's just playing hide and seek for a very long time. All she has to do is find the right words to turn it loose. That's a snicker of magic by Natalie Lloyd. From the desk of Zoe Washington. Hold up, Trevor said. I took a deep breath and I got ready to yell at him to get the clue ready. But when I faced him, he was holding Marcus's letter, which might have fallen out of my journal. It was folded and he was reading it. What are you doing? Stop it. I snatched the letter from him. That's mine and it's private. Trevor put his hands up in the air, but he looked at me straight in the eyes. Is that from your dad? I stopped short. What are you talking about? I tried to keep my face even and make my voice sound casual. Your dad that's in jail? Trevor paused and then said, he's there because he killed somebody, right? My breath caught in my throat. How do you know that? That's from the desk of Zoe Washington by Janae Marks. This one is Sarah Weeks, Save Me a Seat. Joe and Robbie might be from different places, but they're both stuck in the same place, school. Joe lived in the same town all his life, and he was not he was doing just fine until his best friend moved away and left him on his own. Robbie's family just moved to America from India, and hes it's pretty hard to figure out where he fits in. Joe and Robbie don't think they have anything in common, but soon enough they have a common enemy, the biggest bully in their class, and a common mission to take control of their lives over the course of a single crazy week. That's Sarah Weeks, Save Me a Seat, by Gita Varada Haran. All right, our next title. Shouting in the Rain. Shouting in the Rain is by Linda Mohali Hunt. You don't have to weather the storms alone. Delcy loves a good storm, except when the squalls are in her life. Her summer friend, Brandy, has gone back to Cape Cod at last, but devastates her by dumping her for a new friend. She could really use a mom right now, except hers left long ago, and her beloved granny won't even discuss it, says it's too painful. Then she meets Snarky Ronan, a kid who could use a friend too. As they traipse around the Cape, they form a dynamic duo, uncovering neighborhood secrets, standing up to cruelty, and getting into good and bad trouble. 
The most important, they open up to each other and tackle complicated stuff like what it means to be angry versus sad and broken versus whole. That's Shouting in the Rain by Linda Mulholly. All right, our next book. We've read some of these before. This one's um, in a, a new series by Margaret Peterson Haddix. You're the one of the missing. When Jonah and his best friend Chip start receiving threatening notes in the mail, they're plunged headfirst into a mystery. With the help of Jonah's sister, Catherine, they discover the notes may be connected to the shady circumstances around Jonah and Chip's adoptions. When they begin to investigate, they find a vast conspiracy that reaches from far past to the distant future. One that will take them hurtling through time. They don't know who to trust or which shadowy faction to believe. Can Jonah and Chip discover the secrets of their past before a conspiracy catches up to them? Sounds like a, turf painter, uh, a, a page turner. This one's called The Missing Found. All right, now Runaway Twin. Runaway Twin is by Peg Carrot. Sunny is about to make the journey of a lifetime. During 10 years of living in foster homes, Sunny has always yearned to be reunited with her long lost twin sister. So when she finally gets a chance to leave, Sunny is eager to make the cross country trip to find her other half. But her quest quickly becomes complicated when she rescues an abandoned dog runs into bullies, and has to escape a life-threatening tornado. That sounds exciting. Runaway Trin, Twin by Peg Carrot. The 14th Goldfish by Jennifer L. Holm. Believe in the possible. What if you and your grandfather were the same age? Ellie has never liked change. She misses fifth grade. She misses her old best friend. She even misses her dearly departed goldfish. And then one day, a strange boy shows up. He's bossy. He's cranky. And weirdly enough, he looks a lot like Ellie's grandfather, a scientist who's always slightly obsessed with immortality. Could this gawky teenager really be Grandpa Melvin? Has he finally found the secret of eternal youth? That sounds fun. All right, next book. The Old Willis Place by Mary Downing Hahn. The decaying mansion is known as the Willis Place, even though no one named Willis has lived there for years. Diana and her little brother Georgie know every inch of its extensive grounds. They climb trees and swim in the pond, and they can do whatever they want, even stay up all night. They don't have to change their clothes, brush their hair, or go to school. They have total freedom as long as they don't leave the old Willis place. When Lisa arrives with her father, the new caretaker of the estate, Diana is overjoyed. She's been wishing for a friend who's a girl. Maybe Lisa can help her uncover the ghastly secret of the old Willis place. But she and Georgie aren't allowed to make friends. And if Diana befriends Lisa, she'll... She will unleash evil forces beyond her control. That one sounds scary. Meg Medina, uh, her book is Merci Suarez Changes Gears. Merci Suarez has never been like an, the other kids at Seaward Pines Academy. She doesn't have a big house or take fancy vacation. She's a scholarship student who lives with her extended family in three little houses called Las Casitas. She knew sixth grade was going to be different, but she didn't know how different. And not just at school. Back at Las Casitas, her beloved grandfather has been acting strangely, and no one will tell Marcy what's going on. What will it take to make her family finally face the issue they've been avoiding? I like that one. Stella by Starlight by Sharon Draper. Stella lives in segregated South in Bumblebee, North Carolina, to be exact about it. Some stories she, she can get into, some stories she can't. Some folks are right pleasant and some are a lot less than pleasant. To Stella, it sort of evens out and heck, the clan hasn't bothered them for years. But one late night, one late night, 
later than she should be up, much less wandering around outside, Stella and her little brother see something that they're not supposed to see. Something that is the first flicker of change to come. Change not welcome by any stretch of the imagination. As Stella's community, her world is upended. She decides to fight fire with fire. She learns that ashes don't necessarily signify an end. Stella by Starlight. Rain, Rain by Anne Martin. Rose Howard is obsessed with homonyms. She's thrilled that her name is a homonym. She purposely gave her dog Rain a name with two homonyms, Rain, Rain, which according to Rose's rules of homonyms is very special. Not everyone understands Rose's obsession, her rules, and the other things that make her different. Not her teachers, not the other kids, and not even her single father. When a storm hits their rural town, rivers overflow, roads are flooded, and rain goes missing. Rose's father shouldn't have let Lane out. Now Rose has to find her dog, even if it means leaving her routines and the safe places to search. Sounds exciting. The Parker Inheritance. When, Ke when Candace finds a letter in an old attic in Lambert, South Carolina, she isn't sure that she should read it. It's addressed to her grandmother who left town in shame. But the letter describes a young woman, an injustice what that happened decades ago, a mystery unfolding its writer, and the fortune that awaits the person who solves the puzzle. So with the help of Brandon, the quiet boy across the street, she begins to decipher the clues. They're led deep into Lambert's history, full of ugly deeds, forgotten heroes, and one great love, and deeper into their own families with their own unspoken secrets. Can they find the fortune and fulfill the letter's promise before the answers slip into the past yet again? That's the Parker Inheritance by Vivian Johnson. Jack and the Geniuses at the Bottom of the World. This one's by Bill Nye the Science Guy and Gregory Moan. Jack and his foster siblings, Ava and Matt, are not your typical kids. They're geniuses. Well, Ava and Matt are. Ava speaks multiple languages, builds robots for fun, and Matt is an expert astronomer, astronomer and math whiz. As for Jack, it's hard to stand out when you're surrounded by geniuses all the time. Things get more complicated when the trio starts working for Dr. Matt Hank Witherspoon, one of the world's leading scientists. They travel to Antarctica with Hank for a prestigious award. They quickly find out that not it is not at all as it seems. The scientist has gone missing, and it's up to Jack and Ava and Matt to find her and, dis and to discover who's behind it all. Jack and the Geniuses.